Give me a second. That mute button is tricky. Uh, you think after two years, I would have figured that out by now. So this is my first live stream. And uh, I'll tell you a little story. I was uh, freaking out a little bit yesterday because I'm supposed to do this live stream. It's something that I've not done before. I thought it was supposed to be like an interview format. And they're like, uh, nope. <laughs> so uh, please feel free to ask questions. I got a few different talking points in there. Uh, but if nothing else, if for all the virtual training that I've done in the last couple of years, I have learned how to just talk randomly to seemingly nobody uh, through my monitor. But please throw in plenty of questions. Uh, but I will be talking a little bit about, you know, what's new with the 518, the Mac class. If you're not actually taking the Mac class before, I'm going to give you a little rundown on it as well. As well as, and we're going to start off with the big news, we have a certification after eight very long years that I have been authoring and instructing this course, we finally have a certification. And yes, it's, it has been almost exactly eight years. So in April of 2014, if I did my math correctly, the, uh, the first beta of this class was introduced. So it's a long time coming. Uh, the, uh, the name of the cert, it's called the Gimme, which I think is quite appropriate because I've been asking for it. Gimme, gimme, gimme this cert. Stands for GIAC, iOS, and Mac Examiner. Potentially a little background in there, but I think it is really appropriate. And you can uh, also, you know, uh, memorize it uh, or think about it uh, pretty clearly. So uh, pretty happy with the name. I wish I could take credit for the name. Unfortunately, that was uh, somebody else's doing. So uh, props for that. So first off, why the certification? Why do you need a certification? So I've had students over the last eight years, you know, asking this, you know, my, I can't take the class until I have a cert. The bosses will say no. Uh, it does provide students and, you know, uh, educational institutions a reason to take the class so they can prove that they know Mac and iOS. Now, this is also, as far as I'm aware, the brand new first vendor neutral tool independent Mac and iOS certification out there. So that's pretty awesome, I, I, I think, uh, for that one. And of course, it has been a long time coming. So I've had students, I've had alumni come back to take the class, and I'm guessing even more alumni will end up taking the, uh, the class again as well. Now, for those of you who have already taken the class, uh, awesome to see you here. Would love to see you again, <laughs> if you can. Alumni does get 50% off of the new version of the class, so it's definitely changed uh, quite a bit over the last eight years or so. Probably at least two, three, sometimes four times a year, depending on what Apple has been putting out there. Uh, so course alumni, uh, make sure that you uh, are logged into your uh, same portal account through SANS and you will automatically get that 50% off. So that's uh, pretty awesome. And the cert itself, um, at least for, uh, for, for alumni as well as um, recent, uh, recent students, so I think um, the cutoff was July uh, of this past year. Uh, you can also get updated uh, MP3s and the cert itself is 949 US dollars. Uh, so I think that's kind of the rundown there. Now, I am actually pretty brand new to SAN certs. It's been so long. So if I didn't answer your question, uh, do please, uh, you know, throw the question into the chat and hopefully I will be able to answer it during this live stream. A couple of other things is uh, officially that is currently in pre-sale and it will officially be out in June. So next month. So it really has... Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, we'll be taking off uh, very soon. So I'm just trying to keep an eye on the questions here. Thank you, Vid, for throwing those links out uh, there as well. Um, all right, so the, uh, the course itself. So if you have not seen the course before, you've not heard about this course before, you want to know a little bit more about it, it's pretty much everything Apple. There's, there's certainly Macs in there, there's iOS devices, even talk a little bit about the Apple Watch, a little bit about HomePods and TVs and pretty much everything that has an Apple logo, uh, but mostly focus, focusing uh, Mac as well as iOS. 
you know, a little bit of incident response, a little bit of compromised devices, a little bit of true computer forensics. So I try to cover the basis for pretty much everything uh, that is available in there. And if you are looking for anything in particular, uh, certainly let me know. But as far as the course, uh, kind of the rundown, uh, if you will, uh, first off, my class is a little bit different. Us Apple people, we do like to do the quote unquote, think different. I got the campaign, com campaign posters up there as my, uh, for my Zoom backgrounds and whatnot. This is probably, I believe it is the only SANS class that runs on a Mac and requires a Mac. So that is definitely one thing to keep in mind. So I do have specific laptop requirements. If you go onto the course web page right now, it's gonna say Intel laptop, blah, blah, blah. That's not true anymore. I need to update that. I've been testing the M1s out, uh, which is pretty much what you can get right now. And I got a couple of questions through Reddit a couple of days ago. So I do want to make it very clear. If you go to the Apple store and you pick up the latest and greatest Mac that's got the M1 Apple Silicon chip in them, you take the class, you're going to be good to go. So don't worry too much about those. You know, try to get as much RAM as you can. Otherwise, it's going to be maybe a little slower, but it's not going to be a big deal. For those of you who don't want to spend any brand new money on a shiny new Mac, um, usually, um, and you can always Twitter DM me the specs specifically, uh, but I've had students who have come in with some really, really old Macs. It'll still work uh, for the most part. It may just be super, super slow, depending on what specs you have, uh, but it pretty much will work on any Mac. But don't, you know, you know, bring your, your, your Macs from the 80s, please, uh, if only for show and tell. Uh, but I can, you know, pretty much tell you that it's not going to work. So as long as it can run, you know, one of the latest versions of Mac OS, you should be good to go. But if you're worried about anything, do just send me a, a message, Twitter DM. Um, I'll be perfectly honest. I'm not great at LinkedIn. It's there. I don't check it. Uh, so Twitter DM or email or contact me through SANS uh, websites. I'm happy to, uh, to give you recommendations on some of those. All right. Oh, and another thing that this is a little bit different than other SANS classes that you might have taken. It uh, doesn't use a virtualized environment. Uh, so uh, a lot of folks you've taken, you know, 585 or 508 uh, within the forensics curriculum. You get a VM, Windows VM, Linux VM, depending on the class. This is not that class. Uh, we have you uh, install the tools. I assure you nothing is crazy intensive as far as tool installations. Uh, but I want you to use the Mac to do the analysis. Now, I also talk a little bit about, you know, when you get back into the, your labs, how do you use uh, Windows environments or Linux environments to continue on uh, with, your, uh, with your analysis? But in the class itself, we're using a Mac. And it's especially important if you've never used a Mac before, you have to get into the mind, the crazy mind of an Apple user. And then it starts making sense on what kind of artifacts are you looking for? You know, you're doing an investigation, where might you find that one P list or database or something? Uh, so that uh, is definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, but I do end up using a lot of different free and open source tools, uh, a lot of which are cross platform. Uh, so nothing crazy there. I have one commercial tool, I use Celebrite Inspector. Um, uh, for a GUI alternative because it's a fairly command line heavy class. I'm not going to apologize to that. I think using the command line is very, very useful as far as forensics goes. Uh, but I do try to be as cross compatible, platform compatible as possible. Uh, but if you show up with a Windows box to class, can't really help you too much. Uh, and if you know anything about me, I'm definitely a Mac person. I haven't actually used a Windows system 10 years uh, or so. Uh, so I'm kind of out of that Windows realm. I'm very much focused with Apple. They give me plenty of work to do. So I do try to, uh, uh, to keep that uh, Apple based. All right, so kind of let's run through some of the different things that we are going to uh, that you're going to see when you take the class. And this has changed over the last few years uh, or so. So if you have taken the class, maybe you were in the beta eight years ago, it's pretty much a completely different class. So like I mentioned, I update the class at least two to three times a year. Over the course of eight years, it's been updated quite a bit. Again, Apple really does like to keep me on my toes. 
So day one, day one, you can expect a little bit about Mac and iOS fundamentals. We're going to get into some of the data types that you're going to see, a lot of plist files, uh, a lot of SQLite databases. Uh, we're even going to talk a little bit more about some proprietary files uh, that you're going to find on Mac systems because Apple does like to have some special files, many of which are very forensically useful. Uh, we're also going to get into some of the security aspects of the system. So why is it so hard to get data off of these Macs, off of these iOS devices? So we're going to talk about things like, um, like encryption, file vault encryption, uh, the newer hardware encryption with T2 and M1 devices, uh, system integrity protection. We'll talk about uh, things like iOS jailbreaking from the iOS perspective and kind of how their encryption scheme works. Uh, so a lot of the ways of how to get access uh, to uh, these particular devices. I give you a whole course image. I give you a variety of different course images. So what we do is we load up that course image two different ways, because I want to show you two different perspectives. We're going to load it up on the Mac itself through terminal. So you can get uh, terminal access to that. We can run a bunch of scripts on them and a bunch of Mac specific utilities uh, on the data files of the system. And on the iOS side, or excuse me, on the, uh, the commercial tool side, we're going to also import it into Celebrate Inspector. Now you might also use other tools um, outside of this class, things like Axiom or other Celebrate tools or uh, Open Text, FTK, you know, pick your favorite. This is tool agnostic class. I only have those commercial tools in class to make it easier for folks who are not necessarily comfortable with the command line. I do want you to hopefully come into class with a bare minimum uh, command line usage, at least open it up and play around with a few cans. Uh, but I give you all the instructions in the workbook, everything that you might need if you've never used the command line before. So a lot of folks have come in, they've never opened up a Mac in their lives before. They're literally taking the plastic piece off the screen in that first few minutes of class and I make them a command line wizard by the end of class. So don't let that throw you off. But I do really like to, uh, uh, to get into that. Um, other things in day one, things like um, um, different iOS acquisitions. What's the difference between an iOS backup? What's the difference between a full file system dump? Which one's gonna be more uh, useful to you as an investigator? Also, which ones can you actually get access to? So I kind of do a little comparison with that one as well. And then we finally end day one, looking at some disks and partition. How is the data laid out um, in these various formats on there? So that's pretty jam packed uh, day one. Now day two, and I see, uh, see your uh, comment there, Bertie. I'm guessing day two is no longer a deep dive into HFS plus, and you would be absolutely correct. Uh, Apple uh, introduced a few, uh, few years back, APFS, brand new file system. Yay. Uh, so now I'm doing a big deep dive into APFS. I talk a little bit about HFS. It's not quite dead yet. It's about this close to being fully deprecated, uh, but we're definitely focus focusing on latest and greatest APFS for Apple file system. Uh, and I actually had to and it kills me to do this, but I refuse to get it out of, I refuse to remove it from the class, but I had to make it uh, day two, a little bonus section at the end. So a good chunk of day two, uh, you'll get the full class, but right at the end of class, I basically just run out of time, but I refuse to not go over in-depth file system structures. So what I created is a little bonus section. So those of uh, those students who do not care to parse a file system by hand, I know there's folks out there who love it. I know there's folks out there who would prefer never to do that. That's why I do it at the end of day two. So hopefully you're still a little bit fresh. I do it as a giant demo. Students, all you have to do is sit back, kick back, put your feet up and watch me go through a hex editor and look at some specific APFS structures. And for those students who really love this stuff, I do have a very optional APFS deep dive exercise uh, to go with it. Can't say that uh, a lot of folks do that, but I know who my file system nerds are if they do that. So that's kind of a, a little bonus section, but the rest of day two. So we start off with some system triage. We're going over things like network settings and accounts and everything and those few first few checkboxes of an investigation. 
And then we get into some of my favorite artifacts, which are file system related, but not necessarily a deep dive of the uh, of the uh, of the um, of the file system itself. So things like extended attributes, uh, spotlight artifacts, uh, FS events, file system events stored database. A lot of my favorite artifacts come from those three different topics. So I got a lot of different things to talk about there. So that's day two. All right, day three. Day three is all about in the morning or the first half of the day. It's all about user and system configurations, which for the most part is plist after plist after plist. Uh, so I go over quite a few different topics uh, for that one. Things like uh, uh, things like auto runs, um, things like uh, Bluetooth, some sharing preferences, software updates, printing. Uh, Keychains uh, is in there too, Bash and Z shell histories, variety of different topics uh, put in there. Then in the afternoon, it's all about the logs. And there are a lot of logs uh, on these systems. And of course, because it's Apple, every single one has to be parsed out with a separate tool and has a different format to it. So we do take some time on how to parse these things out. And I have a whole other section on how to interpret the data, what to look for for certain things. What about things like um, USB volumes? What about AirDrop? What about, you know, pick your favorite topic? I've got quite a few of them in there. You know, when did users log in? What type of logins were they? Did they log in through their watch? You know, kind of very, very specific uh, samples with, uh, with some of those. But do love logs. There's a lot of stuff to go through. Uh, with some of those. So let me just uh, catch up with some of the comments here. I see, hello, Stacy. I uh, see there's not already a file path sheet. You could help put one together. So I don't know if, uh, if I don't know, Lee Whitfield might, might uh, if he's watching this, he might uh, hurt me a little bit. Uh, let's just say there, there's going to be another cheat sheet available sometime in the future. Uh, I am even thinking about doing my own uh, cheat sheet. So when I actually do find a little bit of free time, but there will be some things like posters put together with it. Uh, we already have a few cheat sheets to start off with uh, for the class. We got the SQLite one that we share with 585. Uh, we have the APFS uh, as well as some of the command line uh, options with uh, for 518 specifically in there. But we're also looking at putting together a poster and I'm even thinking about putting together kind of a little cheat sheet for things like unified logs and how to do the different queries with unified logs. So when I actually get some free time. That's kind of some other things that you can uh, hopefully see. It's not done yet. I don't know when it's going to be done, but hopefully in the future. I always have this running to-do list of things to get done uh, with this. Need that index. Uh, yes. So that index is in the books. Um, it's not the best index in the world. And especially, especially now that we have a cert, you're going to want to do your own index. And that's the best way that you can possibly study is going through, listening to me, watching me. Don't tell me that you're actually doing that because I find that kind of creepy. Not that you're not doing that right now, uh, but I know students who will just listen to those MP3s over and over and over again and start indexing their own books, getting all the different tabs and kind of however your best way of studying and putting those together, because speed is of the essence when it comes to taking the tests itself. Um, let's see a couple of other questions. Is it offered to military at a discounted rate or through credentialed assistance? I do not have the answer uh, for that. So I'm going to maybe let our marketing folks, uh, if they do know the answer, throw that in there. Uh, but if not, uh, I will make a note uh, and try to put that answer out onto Twitter because I don't actually know that. Um, let's see, what do we got here? Just kind of going through the rest of them. All right. I think that's pretty much it for now. All right. Back into what you can expect with the class. Day three, or excuse me, we already did day three. We got talked about logs. Day four. So did a huge revamp on day four uh, during the pandemic time. And this is a SQLite day. We're going through applications and there's quite a few native applications. 
Each one of these has a very specific database schema. This database schema also changes pretty much every time you look at it. So we're gonna talk about <coughs> kind of what you can expect with some of those. Uh, a little bit uh, earlier on in day four, I also kind of go through things like uh, applica application permissions or the TCC database, you know, which application requested access to the microphone or the camera, things like that. Uh, I also do a little bit of things like MRU analysis. So most recently used things, applications, documents, what have you. And I also go into a little bit about how I do application testing and research. I'm a huge proponent of having folks, examiners do their own research. I would love to be able to teach you literally everything that Apple has ever put out ever, but this cl class would not be able to be done within six days. It does not exist. And you always get those questions when you're doing an examination. Where is this one particular setting? Here is an application that I've never seen before. So I kind of go and do a little, a little, kind of overview on how do I find out those answers? So I have a lot of stuff that I go through with this class, but what about that one particular thing that you might need for your investigation? So how to do things like file system monitoring, what tools do I use, uh, pro tip, it's all free tools, free with purchase of Mac, uh, if you will. Uh, so a lot of open source stuff uh, that I go with, um, within there to kind of get you an idea of how to set up your devices, even talk about jailbroken devices, what's the best options out there right now, and how you can do some of that uh, kind of deep dive analysis to answer some of those questions. Uh, also in uh, SQLite Day, or Application Analysis Day, as I think it's officially called, we also do a little SQLite 101. So if you've never written a SQLite query before, you will see, I, I don't know, I might, I wanna say hundreds of SQLite queries, but that may be slightly over-exaggerating, but there's a lot of them uh, within the class. And I am not as evil as I, I hear about some folks in 585, the advanced smartphone forensics uh, from Heather and Lee. Uh, I do not make you create one from scratch. I might have you edit one and kind of play around with one, but I also give you a lot of SQLite queries uh, for your own analysis. So I am, I am an evil person, you know, on Twitter, I am evil twin. I truly like to be an evil person. So I do a lot of command line stuff, which some folks are evil. I do a lot of file system stuff, uh, which some folks might be think is evil. Uh, but I don't have you build a SQLite query from scratch. Uh, but I do show you a lot of the differences between the native applications. There's a few different ways of data being stored on these devices. So you know kind of what you're going to see when you open up a Mac or iOS device. Now, as far as um, other applications, pretty much every native application, kind of the big ones that I'd like to talk about, things, of course, like Safari and Mail, but also even some of the, the slightly more rare ones, like Screen Time is relatively new, Reminders. Uh, of course, I'll talk about things like Messages. And this is also going to go back and forth between Mac and iOS. Sometimes the database is exactly the same for the application on both devices, and sometimes it's completely different. And sometimes it changes uh, over the last uh, few years or so. So we got things like Maps in there as well, uh, Apple Pay and Wallet, if you're looking for things like financial transactions, Notes. Notes is a base. A lot of different applications uh, that are being thrown in there. Uh, let's see. Day five. Day five is kind of my everything else sort of day, my potpourri, uh, if you are a Jeopardy fan. We're going to talk about one of my favorite uh, subjects where a lot of my personal research comes into play, and that is pattern of life or the slightly less professional term, which is all the creepy stuff that Apple is tracking on your devices. Again, Mac as well as iOS. So things like the Knowledge C database, uh, the location databases, power log databases, all the really, really good, cool, creepy stuff. We got a whole module on just looking into some of those. Also have another module on things like document versions, you know, all those maybe text documents that you have open. They're just constantly creating little snapshots and how to look at those. It's kind of a really weird artifact uh, that not a lot of folks really know is exi existing on these systems. Talk a little bit more about us uh, and iCloud in there. 
And then we get some more into the security side of things. So a little bit about Mac, uh, Mac malware, Mac and iOS malware, actually, uh, as well as how to do maybe some intrusion analysis. So I start putting in other topics that we previously talked about on how do you tell if a device is compromised type of analysis. We'll talk about Apple security enhancements, things like notarization, gatekeeper, xProtect, uh, those kind of features in there. Uh, then we get into a little bit about memory acquisition and analysis. So memory dumping, not just the Windows thing, also available for Mac, uh, even though it's getting pretty tricky uh, these days for uh, due to various reasons. And then finally, we, we wrap up the class, well, not wrap up the class, but wrap up the content of the class with password cracking and encrypted containers. So I got a really great exercise that we land on. We basically create a dictionary file from a memory dump, and then we can crack all the things with it um, in, the, uh, in the class itself. So it works out really, really well. Then day six, the challenge. If you've taken a forensic, SANS forensics challenge before, this is the big challenge. You get into groups. We have a whole scenario for you. Um, I, I, when I build my data sets, I no joke and building these on hardware. These are not VM data sets. This is as realistic as it can possibly put together. I'm traveling the world with these things. I got two watches strapped to my, uh, to my wrists. I got phones. Everything uh, is uh, based on hardware. So I got a really great end of class scenario. And if your group wins, you get the super cool, let me try to put it at the camera there, the super cool Mac challenge coin. So I was able to uh, design this one myself. You'll notice it's got the little command symbol in there with the old school Apple color logos. And it's just really, really cool coin to show off. And if I, I, I might be a little bit biased, but I think it is the best looking coin of the entire DFER curriculum. Perhaps my colleagues might say otherwise, but I think it's a good coin. Yeah, Stacy agrees with me and that's all that matters. <laughs> so it is a gorgeous, gorgeous coin. All right, let me get into some questions here. Let's see, is there a minimum version of Mac OS required for this course? Yes, there is. Uh, it is Mac OS Mac OS, Mac OS 10.13. So that's actually about oh, four or five versions ago. Uh, but that's when the APFS started out. So that's why we require it. And there's specific tools there that we require it for. So 10.13 should be good to go. Uh, every once in a while, um, the latest and greatest version throws us off. But uh, as of right now, I guess it's uh, Mac OS 12.3. We should be good to go with that too. But that's part of the fun in a Mac class is like, oh, Apple released an update. Let's see what's changed. So artifacts change, databases change. Hopefully software keeps working with any luck. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Uh, but it's all a part of the experience uh, when you're in the class. How do you deal with these real life problems? A artifact doesn't exist anymore on this version. Let's go figure it out. I have done, you know, in class, ad hoc research to go find that one artifact that doesn't exist in its location anymore, or that one obscure thing that a student might need for a, uh, for a particular examination that they are doing. So if I know that I can do it relatively quickly, I try to do it live in class, or maybe like during lunch or breaks or something uh, like that as well. Ah. <sighs> Something, let's see. Oh, additional classes. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about what classes we have going on here. So tomorrow, I fly to San Diego. We're doing uh, Security West in San Diego. It's been a couple of years since we've been there. Uh, and it is a hybrid event. Uh, if you've never done a hybrid event yet, it's uh, you get your choice. You can be either there in person in San Diego highly recommend the weather is beautiful uh, this time of year or you can do the live online so you're going to see me streamed live online you'll see me in the front of the classroom making the same bad jokes as my students who are sitting in front of me so depending on where you're at what you want to do that's how a hybrid works uh, so we got san diego coming up in a couple days it's really coming up quite soon so if you do want to do san diego i would sign up soon <laughs> i think that starts what, Thursday, the class starts on Thursday. Uh, we have D for Summit in Austin, by far one of my favorite events. And this is the first time we'll be back in Austin again after a couple years. 
really, really looking forward uh, to this one. So this is August, uh, later August. And it also, I should mention, it also uh, two days before the, the start of class is the DFER Summit. And again, both the summit and the classes are being held, held in a hybrid style. So if you can't make it to Austin or you just do not like hot weather, because it does get pretty hot in Austin in August, uh, you can certainly do it from the comfort of your living room and air conditioning. So we do have that available too. And then we have Amsterdam. So I'm not teaching in Amsterdam, I'm doing San Diego and Austin, but I also have another instructor you may have heard of, Lee Whitfield. He's the other official instructor for this class. Uh, he's one of my good friends, an excellent instructor. Uh, so I am sending him out to Amsterdam during the DFER Summit. Sorry, Lee, I apologize. Uh, they just happened to schedule them at the same time. So he's gonna hang out in Amsterdam. Um, August 15th. Uh, so if you are in Europe, uh, that is a great class to go through there. And then we also have another one on the schedule, Tokyo. Uh, so we don't, uh, this class doesn't go out to the APAC region too often. So do try to take, a, uh, take advantage of that when it is out there. If you are located out there, if you just want to go to Tokyo, that's cool too. And that's another hybrid event. Um, and that is December 4th. So it's pretty much all hybrid events uh, right now. And you can take it uh, with either me or Lee. Maybe you do have a preference. Maybe you like uh, Lee's, I don't know, Texan, British, dry humor. <laughs> Not entirely sure what to call it. Uh, but he does have some really, really great stories. Uh, so even I want to take my own class uh, with Lee at some point. Now, these are the only classes that we have available now. There's always new classes that are constantly coming out. So if none of these work for you right now, uh, you can either wait a little bit or you can always take it on demand. Now, on demand is more of like a self-study. So you're going to get videos, you're going to get audio, you're going to see me teaching, uh, you're going to be doing kind of my own thing there. It's just not live. Uh, so you do uh, get those recordings uh, with those as well. So if that works better for your schedule, you certainly also have that option. Uh, let's see, just taking a look to see if there is any other questions. Yeah, 50% discount that applies to law enforcement. Definitely check that out if you are law enforcement. Making a quick look. All right, not seeing any other specific questions here. Um, I don't have a whole lot else to talk about. I can hang out for maybe a couple minutes. I know this is, you know, I actually talked about this more than I thought I would. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but constantly introducing a lot of new things. So a lot of the times, you know, specific classes will be timed to when Apple is doing their keynotes. Uh, so we might even throw up the keynote every once in a while and see what new fresh stuff Apple is introducing uh, that's out there because Apple has always got uh, new stuff coming out. And I'll, you know, I'll try to kind of mentally go through how do I look for these new artifacts? What do I think it's going to change? You know, since I've been teaching this class for eight years, I've gotten pretty good on kind of figuring out where what Apple's method to their madness actually is. Uh, so even if we can update devices, we can see new stuff. I love doing some ad hoc stuff. If I have the time, uh, I'll be perfectly honest. Anybody who's taken my class knows I'm going to fit in as much as I possibly can. You know, with uh, a lot of the content, a lot of the exercises, there's a lot to go through. And if, of course, if anybody's got, you know, some investigations that they're currently doing, any particular questions, especially on all the content you know, I might not have covered one thing that you're particularly looking for. That happens. It's always worth asking. You know, if I can do a quick little ad hoc presentation, I'm happy to do so. I've stayed with students, you know, after class, kind of working through some of their uh, some of their cases, not specifically their cases, but, you know, hey, I have this problem. How can I go and solve this? What kind of artifacts can I look for some of those? So certainly happy to do that uh, as well. Uh, we do have a couple of links there for the D first summit. It is the 15th D, D first summit. And I, I think Viv's got some interesting uh, surprises uh, headed our way for this particular uh, summit here. Again, I'm super thrilled uh, to be going back to Austin. 
not the heat so much. I'm really not a hot weather kind of person, but just the camaraderie. It's, I think it's one of my favorite conferences out there. It's relatively small. Everyone knows each other. It's a great place to network. And you know you're going to always have some really cool forensic presentations in there. Got the Jan out V. Uh, we got a question. Has the transition to M1 Max influenced the contents of your course in any way, or is it the same on or is all the same on M1? So the main piece about M1 is not really the data content. That's pretty much the same. It's getting access to that data, which is the really tricky part. So T2 and M1s, again, some more security enhancements that Apple has uh, kind of introduced over the last few years can make things a little tricky, you know, with the encryption and passwords and stuff like that. Can't always guarantee that you're always going to be able to get access to the data. But I have uh, one particular slide, which I call the most depressing slide of, of day one. It says, these are all the things that you need to consider. And it's not just, you know, a certain process. You don't just go from A to B to C to D when you're doing an acquisition because everyone's device is gonna be configured a little bit differently. Uh, so I do try to give you as many caveats and considerations as possible. Uh, and even then, you may just not be able to get the data. Apple is making it very, very difficult uh, for us these days. Great from a security perspective. I love knowing that my data is probably pretty darn safe, but from a forensics perspective, ugh, they make us work hard uh, for that data. D for Cricket as the new Lego minifig. I agree. Oh, D for Cricket. One of my nightmares from a previous D for Summit. It's probably 2013, if I remember correctly. The, uh, the hotel was covered in crickets. I'm no, no joke, covered in crickets. It was the craziest thing. All right. Yeah, going retro. Super uh, excited to see some of those. All right, I'm just trying to looking over my notes here, seeing if there's anything else that I want to mention. So you got a couple more minutes potentially to throw in some questions before we sign off for the day. I think I talked about everything that I really wanted to here. Uh, but of course, if you do happen to have a question later on, you can always find me on Twitter. You can send me a DM. Um, you can... Again, you could try to ask a question on LinkedIn. I'm really, really terrible at LinkedIn. I think I check it about once a year <laughs> to be very, very fair with you. Uh, you can find emails out there for me. You know, I think it's, uh, what is my SANS email? It's like, I should know this. Give me one second. It is S Edwards, S E D W A R D S at sans.edu. So feel free to throw questions in there uh, as well. Oh, yeah. Gibby is now on pre sale. Thank you, Viv. Uh, it is officially out in June next month. Uh, any discounts for alumni just to take the test? Uh, I don't believe so. I think it's a pretty standard amount now $949. already mentioned, is there a cyber live for this certification? I do not believe so. I think the cyber live is like the lab environment, if I remember correctly. Uh, but uh, I do not believe so. I think it's just the old school uh, SANS certification type of test. See, Big T is already registered for it. Good luck, Tony. <laughs> Good luck. Cool, cool, cool. Great to hear that is, uh, it is out there uh, finally. Uh, so with that, I'm going to wrap up this session. So you know where to contact me. You know where you can find me uh, through, through email, through Twitter, through live conference at some point. Feel free to stop me in the hallway. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have for it. All right. Well, I think we're done. So thanks for visiting. Thanks for hanging out with me. And thanks for just listening to me talk about Apple stuff for the last 40 minutes or so.